What's up, y'all? Dodge Whisperer here. It's time for your weekly Barracuda status report, because I've been busy. We've got multiple things accomplished this week. We've got our torsion bars swapped out for the smaller ones we robbed from the Valiant Effort. We've got, you know, a transmission put up in the car so we can measure for a drive shaft. Even better, subframe connectors are now welded into the car. So, we got some new parts even in. All right, guys, here we are under the car. This has been my office for the week because, well, been quite busy. Now, primary objective for this week was to measure for a drive shaft. And we got the transmission back up in where it's supposed to be. And even test fit our drive shaft safety loop from US Car Tool. Seems to be a pretty good set of equipment. I don't know. It's not adjusted yet. Mm, hopefully the exhaust clears the way I want it to, but we'll find out. Now, the drive shaft that was in this car was not correct. Um, the uh, U-join on the end of it that went to the Rear end, yeah, not the right size. Wiggled in between the, uh, the ears of the uh, yoke, and overall, I'm just glad it didn't explode in the burnout. Um, but that's been done. We'll cover some of the basics there on measuring for a drive shaft, and uh, we'll cover some of the other stuff that got welded in and replaced here because it was pretty extensive. It took most of the week. All right, measuring a drive shaft. So, download a quick sheet like this off the old internets, and first measurement we're going to take is how much the transmission output shaft sticks out of the back of the transmission, and got 1.2 inches there. Next up, we need to know the size of our U-joints. Now, we are using 1350 U-joints in this application, and that is a 3.625 between the tabs of the yoke. Also, we need to know the size of the cap, which is 1.188. From there, you've got to let the weight of the car down onto the suspension so that you can get a proper measurement from here to there. You're going to have your yoke on the rear axle, horizontal to the ground, and take a measurement from there to the back of the transmission, not the shaft. And that measurement came out to 48.25 inches. Pretty simple, and uh, hopefully the uh, guys over at our drive shaft shop in Seguin will get us all squared away. All right, so transmission is in the car. They take it out one more time, we'll see. But we did go ahead and get our replacement transmission cross member cleaned up. We swapped over the mount. It was in my old one, which was pretty pretty fresh, looked fine to me. And, you know, kind of just got our old ratchet strapped up between our torsion bars. Basically, where it's going to live. So, from there, we ought to get our measurement from tail shaft housing. And back down to the yoke. So, as you can see, this is a New 1350 series yoke from Dr. Diff. Uses a U-bolt style uh, bolts that go straight through with nuts on the back side. Very heavy duty and uh, much more reliable in my experience than the standard Chrysler style yokes with the little chicken bolts that, you know, they're a pain in the butt. I hate them. So, upgraded. Now, as you can see, I don't have a this actually tightened down yet because, well, the old seal there, I gave, gave it the old squish test, and yeah, that seal looks like it's seen better days to me. So I am going to swap that out so we don't, you know, tear up our nice shiny new yoke. So like I was saying, guys, this is the old drive shaft that had some fitment issues. What we found when we took it apart is that this dimension right here on this U-joint is not the same as that. Now what was happening there, uh, we found out when we took it apart, 
is that these caps were actually kind of pulled apart a little bit. Well, there you go. That one just fell off, but they were kind of pulled apart like that, and the whole drive shaft was wiggling in between the caps. And, you know, I'm not sure what happened there, but something happened. And uh, let's see if I can demonstrate here. Yeah. That's how much play there was in this drive shaft. Um, not good. Another item I found that, you know, obviously uh, was kind of an issue too, is that yoke right there is all torn up and not good. Like I said, I hate these style Chrysler yokes, 7260, 7290. I think this is a 7260. But those tiny little bolts, they're a pain in the butt. You gotta torque them just right. I've had them fall out of my 4x4 truck before. And uh, yeah, switch over to 1350s. Oh, my truck runs 1410. Much better design, and you can uh, get a, a, a U-bolt style that goes all the way through. So, anyway, check your drive shafts, because um, this would have absolutely failed. So, the next item on this week's list was installing our subframe connectors. Which, you know, they were a kit that I bought many, many years ago. Not exactly sure where they came from. And, you know, I know there's some better ways to do this, I've seen. But these were in stock and they do allow for your parking brake cable to pass through, which is pretty convenient, I think. And it should work out pretty well. Well, I'm not a professional welder, guys, but they're not buggers. And, eh, I think they'll they'll do the job pretty well and overall I'm pretty happy with how it turned out definitely required some massaging of the floor pan right in front of the rear subframes and lots of grinding to you know get this stuff fit up pretty well but I'm like I said happy with how it turned out and should tie this car together and well make it as fast as possible right we got lots to uh, lots to worry about there with uh, our race against bad tree. Yeah, that Cuda is going to be fast. Also this week we got the old Mopar Performance 0.99 inch bars out of this car. As well, I think they're probably a little on the stiff side. And well, let's just say it like this. The right side was on the left, the left side was on the right, and 20 year ago Dodge Whisper didn't know what he was doing. So, Valiant Effort did pay off for at least one of us here. These are the uh, original 1976 A-body crew cab bars. And they measure in at 0.87 inches. And fit like a glove. And, I don't know if you can see the markings on there, but the left side is on the left. And wouldn't you know it, the right side is on the right, which I'm happy about. And hopefully it uh, you know, helps that old weight transfer issue on these old cars, because that's all I got. And it saved a pound on each side, so that's cool. Now that we've got the chassis of the 68 Barracuda pretty much buttoned all together, I believe. Brakes, subframes, transmission, we've got a drive shaft lined out that we'll have in a couple of weeks. The next step is a motor, and that is this coming up week's project. Now, as you all know, this thing uh, has a Magnum 380 crate motor in it that was, you know, purchased about 20 something years ago. It started life in my black top pan pickup. Uh, drove it to college for a little bit, and then pulled it out because I bought a Barracuda, and I decided, well, you know. The Barracuda clearly needs the 380 horse motor. And, you know, put about, oh, 20 miles on the Barracuda before it then sat for another 20 years. We fired it back up from time to time during that period, but it never really, you know, got run a lot. So the motor is in good shape, does a great burnout still, sounds amazing. But 
I've got some upgrades planned for it. Number one upgrade is the rusty, crusty headers that were um, purchased a long time ago. Well, let's just say they've had better days. They might have another year left in them before there was probably not going to be much left of them. So, headers have arrived, thankfully, and uh, they look pretty nice. Now, to go along with some headers, we've also got a new set of cylinder heads for this engine. Uh, found a company that does pretty nice uh, machining work, seems like. They take a fresh set of EQ cylinder heads, uh, which are brand new, fresh castings. They don't have the uh, cracking issues that the you know, stock Magnum style castings do. Upgraded to 202 stainless intake valves, 1.6 stainless exhaust valves. Top it all off with a really nice valve job. They even have a little bit of CNC porting. And uh, I'm hoping that that should, you know, be worth another 30, 40, 50 horse on this engine. Because, well, like, we're going to need it. Is uh, old Blake from Bad Tree Productions. Well, they've got quite a package going together, it looks like. And hopefully they get it all together. Best of luck to you, Blake. So, let's, uh, let's take a look at the old crusty rusties and the new fancy shiny stuff. Some crusty rusty old Headman headers here. They have seen much better days. Um... They're very thin. Uh, that one clearly hit the ground a few times. Uh, I don't think they've got much more time in them, y'all. We all know how long headers last that aren't properly coated and you know taken care of and stuff. And also, they never really sealed up very well. You can kind of see that from some of the exhaust leakage spots, I think. But yeah. Those, you know, put them on eBay, right? You know, they're vintage, classic. We know what we have. Don't lowball me. The new headers did arrive finally. Nice fresh set of Doug's headers. D453 part number with their ceramic coating. Head, I have heard really good reviews that these fit very, very nicely on A bodies. And I certainly hope so, because the old headmans, they did not fit very well at all. And, you know, we gotta, we gotta dress this Magnum motor up to match the car, right? It's, uh, you know, in need of a new paint job. I'm thinking black, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do we keep it Mopar orange? Or do we paint it black? I'm kind of digging the black. And cylinder heads are getting changed because, you know, 20-year-old valve job that's not been very well stored, as you can see from the dirt daubers and open ports that have been like that for the last six months. Well, we probably want to clean that up. Give it the best chance of making all the powers that can because, well, it needs every bit. And cylinder heads... Have arrived also. It took no less than four months to get these, which is um, was kind of not ideal. And uh, you know, we'll get a little bit closer view of these next week. But I'm pretty impressed so far. Porting looks pretty nice on them. Valve job looks great. They've got a nice set of valve springs and whatnot in them. And I think it'll definitely wake up the old Magnum 360 380 horse crate motor and you know if the math adds up it might be worth about 30 or 40 horsepower maybe a little more we'll find out I guess alrighty guys that does it for today Barracuda update check motor installed no hey transmissions in we got a drive shaft measured chassis finished we're getting pretty close. Next week, we'll put an engine together. With any luck, might even put it back in the car. So, stick around. Subscribe if you're not. Like and share. And we'll see you next time.